Hi, uh, my name is Josh Atwell. I introduced myself earlier, developer advocate at NetApp. Um, I used to write a lot of code. Now I write presentations. This is the most challenging type of presentation. Regardless of what I've done in the past, Bourbon has been part of it. Um, I've spent a lot of time talking to people about infrastructure extensibility. Now, for those not thinking about infrastructure, which I find is fairly common in, in these events, this is where APIs and SDKs enable you to manage infrastructure components. And as I'll get into in a minute, that's not always been the case. This provides us a lot of agility and capability to control the environment and make it meet the needs that we have as our needs change. And as we look at it, we look for feature availability, making sure that we can do these things when we need to as those needs change. Now, you're all exposed to this within your daily life. In fact, over the last couple of weeks, I've been integrating all kinds of things into my house, including um, a new Nest thermostat, a new ring doorbell that shuts down every afternoon because it gets too hot, um, and other components to make my life interesting. Because when the light bulb was invented, the very follow-up thought was, let's put a Wi-Fi antenna in it. Like, this is a natural progression of what we should do with the technology in our homes. Well, frankly, I don't think that was necessarily the use case, but we were very creative. In fact, we've created products, so many products, that we could control directly with our smartphones. And we're able to do that because these products now have embedded code and extensibility. You can actually integrate them with broader products and other capabilities. But it comes with a problem. If you travel a lot, you get texts like this. What am I supposed to do? I've got a new one now. My ring doorbell continues to shut off at 4.30 in the afternoon because it gets too hot. There's not much I can do. However, now we're starting to see products that are coming to market that can handle certain behavior. I could actually use something like If This Then, then That to reconnect my doorbell when it disconnects or to tell my lawnmower that's the wrong spot. I check GPS. That's no longer where you need to be. This is a slide with Nikola Tesla. I don't actually have content for this slide. I needed 20 slides, and we should reflect on how amazing Nikola Tesla is. Because if anybody saw this coming, it would have been this guy. I wasn't kidding. I needed 20 slides. All right, so how does this affect DevOps? Okay, so DevOps, infrastructure extensibility, how does that work? Well, one thing is fundamentally clear. Continuous integration and bringing the infrastructure into your deployment process is a sign of maturity. So you made a commit. That's great. I'm an ops guy. Is it going to deploy? I don't know. Are we going to have to spend all weekend working on this? Being able to write code is one thing, but making sure that it gets into the environment and is stable and capable, as we've talked about numerous times today, because this is what we tend to see. It feels vaguely familiar from earlier. I, I chuckled, right? The Great Wall of Deployment. The ops people, they sit over there. They have no visibility what's happening on the other side. All they know is every now and then some code comes flying over the wall. And we're kind of put off by this, but it's not our fault. From an operations standpoint, we haven't had very much control. The things that we were involved with managing were CLI-based. We couldn't write very sophisticated automation. The integrations we worked with were very limited to what the vendors were providing us. But now, now we have APIs, we have SDKs, we're learning to develop, we're learning to code our infrastructure. We could use REST, we can actually integrate with common tools that we're using every day, both in the development side, but now bringing it into the operations side. This gives us this opportunity to look at the world and be a little bit sad, because there are way too many products out there that could be a part. I know even in my conversations at the booth, somebody's like, hey, do you have an integration with Terraform? Mm, we could. I think we might. So when I talk to customers, one of the things that gets them really excited is they're like, wait, I could completely control my infrastructure with code? I'm totally going to turn this thing into something amazing, crazy, and cool. Hold on a little bit there, Tiger. Calm down. That can get a little bit scary. What we recommend is when you look at your infrastructure, use policy-based management. Put some guardrails around it. Set some limits and some frameworks on how people can consume that because the policies allow you to define the behavior of the environment and work within constraints that you know are going to work. They can be consistent and flexible. They make sure that whatever you're deploying out as you change your infrastructure, because as we've seen in recent months, infrastructure is still critically important, right? It can be uh, predictable and you can monitor and, and understand what's happening. So now you have an opportunity to create this bridge over that great wall of deployment. You have an opportunity to look your neighbor in the eye, although some of us don't like our neighbors as much, but that's okay, we're getting there, right? And understand that how that code is moving from one side to the other. Just don't connect it to the internet. Thank you.